Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 10. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So why do we say the beauty of mathematics for Bitcoin? Well, the reason is because in nature, we, we generally can see mathematics everywhere. And the idea, the general implication is that, well, maybe we can see it in Bitcoin too. So what we're doing here is we're not just plotting the total, mar the total market capitalization of Bitcoin, we're actually doing it of the entire asset class. And what we notice is that while there are pullbacks, the, the entire asset class as a whole generally trends upward. Now, the entire asset class is coming in at a market capitalization of a modest 1.9 trillion. We know Bitcoin's about making up approximately 1.1 trillion of that. The fair value fit of the logarithmic regression trend line is now coming in at 604 billion, representing approximately a 215% overvaluation from the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. We've discussed these accumulation phases before. The idea that when we're in the accumulation phase, which is below the fair value, you don't really care so much about the little bunny hills that happen. What you do is you just DCA, not financial advice, but you just DCA into the market. That's what I do. And wait, wait for the pump of the market cycle to begin. You can see that we had one in 2019, sort of a fake pump that took us up a little bit. And then we ultimately came back down to our undervaluation region for a bit longer uh, before blasting off. Now we've noticed too that our peaks are getting closer to the fair value fit. You can see this represented by the fact that the first one goes well above the green line, the second one's just above it, the third one goes right up to it. Therefore, if history is any indication, then maybe we don't quite make it to the green line this market cycle. One of the best ways to, to identify where we currently are with respect to overvaluation from the fair value trend line is to show the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market capitalization and the fair value fit and realize that we are in a general downtrend channel here from the peaks right we keep going down um, each market cycle so the extension from the fair value decreases therefore i would expect it to decrease this time as well which might get us up to approximately 900 percent 800 percent overvaluation from the fair value trend line if we continue this general trend one thing to consider is that if we go straight up, we'll be there before we know it. A bearish scenario would be we don't make it there this cycle. Some other types of scenarios are, are again, remembering that so far, there are a lot of similarities between this cycle and two cycles ago. The idea of going to the undervaluation region, popping back up, this was our 2019 summer bubble, back down, back up to poke our head above the fair valuation region, back down for one final capitulation before blasting off. Remember that this 100% has been is the fair value, so the entire chart has been shifted by 100%, so that anything below 100% is actually undervalued. So, what do we say by that? What, what can we take away from this? Well, it is there is some dubious extrapolation going on here. If dubious extrapolation isn't your thing, then move along to another video. But if dubious extrapolation is your thing, we can say, well, hey, this one was a, a, a double peak cycle. Maybe we'll have something similar this cycle and do something like that. We always want to be on the lookout for, for, for different possibilities. We also notice that if you compare this peak to the intermediate peak before the second second major peak, it was about one third of its valuation. If we were to, to project the same thing out, that might have us going to approximately 400% overvalued, which we have not reached yet. Remember, this is a logarithmic scale as well, as well. So it might not be the, the, the scale might not be what you're what you're used to as opposed to say a linear scale. Now, another way to look at this is to consider that, well, what if we call this one a triple peak cycle, right? Peak one, peak two, and peak three. Maybe this one will look the same way, and we'll have peak one, peak two, and then peak three, and we'll ultimately end up doing something like that. Or maybe we just go straight up. Regardless of what way we go, it appears that time remains on our side. And if we have corrections, if we go straight up, no matter how you look at it, it still seems like time is on our side in the grand scheme of a cryptocurrency market cycle. The other thing to look at is back to our fair value fit, remembering that whether we go up now, straight up, if we cool off for a while and then go up, if we delay it even longer and then go up, remember, time is on our side. And note too, that if we go just below the green line, then we could be flirting with a modest $10 trillion for the entire cryptocurrency asset class. 
I think the longer it takes us to move up, the higher probability we will go to $10 trillion because again, I don't think we'll make it to the green line because each cycle so far, we're falling further and further down in terms of extension from the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. So the longer it takes, the more likely we are to reach $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion dollars. But again, as I always say, as we go to sleep at night, we can't help but think as we drift off into dreamland, what's a few trillion dollars among our friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye.